following events were recorded as they happened at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. In this episode of Life's Little Miracles, Daniel's Cranial Reconstruction. Thirteen-month-old Daniel Daly was born with Apert syndrome, resulting in the premature fusing of the bones in his skull. There he is. Up we go. There we go. It's going to measure your head. All righty. His skull must be reconstructed to allow his brain enough room to grow, or Daniel could face permanent brain damage. Yeah, that's the guy. The syndrome has also caused Daniel to suffer from hydrocephalus, a condition in which the normal flow of fluid inside his brain has become blocked. Today, doctors will attempt to control his hydrocephalus by inserting a shunt to relieve the buildup of fluid in his brain. About 30% of the kids with APERTS overall end up needing a shunt. So we're going to put the shunt in and we'll probably put it in right up here. And because of his head shape, we're going to use ultrasound guidance to make sure we get it in the right place. And the whole, the whole system will be underneath the skin. And then we'll tunnel it down here and make a little tiny opening in his tummy and put it in there. Does it go right in his stomach? Or? It, no, it goes into the cavity that contains the stomach, but it's outside all the okay. organs. And the fluid is absorbed back into his bloodstream and then recirculates normally. And then the only issues afterwards are, as I mentioned, the shunts tend to fail with time. And the highest time for them to, or the, the most common time for them to fail is within six months of surgery. Oh, okay. Okay. So we'll follow them very closely for the first six months. Okay. Hopefully the um, shunt will address the CSF flow problems even after his craniofacial surgery. Okay. Okay. I think it's booked for two hours. That's just kind of on average. Could be a little longer, a little shorter, and that's not all operating time. That is getting them to sleep. Yeah. So, do you have any questions? If I don't know if you have to shave their head for the incision, the doctor. And if yeah. it does, well, I just want. I want save to some save some little curly straws. Yeah. Not a problem. Put them in a little bag and put his name on it. Those little curls are precious. Yeah. Okay. You have a big smile now. Okay. Okay. We'll take good care of her. Yeah. We're gonna have a little break for a bit. Oh, don't be too sad. We knew this was gonna happen. Well, no one can replace mom, but we'll sure take good care of you. Okay. See you later, buddies. Okay. We'll look after her. Okay. Okay. Open sesame. So we've assembled two teams of surgeons to do this operation as fast as possible. One team is going to work on the head and the other team is going to make a small opening in his abdomen. We're going to use 15 blades, okay? He's just a baby. Okay, the drill. Just make a small opening in his skull and we'll make it a little bit bigger today so that we can use the ultrasound. the shunt underneath the skin and so we're going to just tunnel underneath the skin very gently and the shunt now so now we're going to pass the shunt down the first stage that's the first stage nice so now we're going to pass the second stage okay so now we've tunneled the shunt from the incision in his abdomen up to the back of the scalp. And can I have the ventricular catheter? And now this is where I'm going to place it using ultrasound. So there I am on the screen. You see that? And, uh, and there I'm in. All the holes are in and it's in perfect position. 
So we've just attached the valve onto the ventricular catheter. Can you get a little closer? This, this is the hardest thing in the whole case right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just perfect. Good, good. Okay, I'm just close it up. Okay. Basically, the purpose of the uh, surgery today is to reshape uh, Daniel's skull. Um, as we've talked about, the nature of this operation is with an incision that goes from one side of the head across the other to expose where the abnormal shaped skull is and then to remove it, reshape it, but also to give the brain more space to grow and develop and also give the forehead a better contour and more space for the eyes to develop. Okay. So I think we'll be doing the back first and then we'll, we'll do the front. And that how do you do the back? You just take it off and reshape it? It's the, it's it, the very same technique. Yeah, we use the same incision. And, and in order to do the back, what we have to do is we have to put him on his tummy when we do the back. And then after we've done the back, we'll turn him over and we'll do the front. The fact that the shunt is there may limit exactly what, what I'm able to do somewhat. Because if we affect that shunt's function, it can also have detrimental effects on Daniel. So, so this is going to be a long day for you guys. That's what we're prepared for. Yeah. Okay. Can you be better being carried? Hi, Dana. Okay. Okay, let's go on. Let's go. Hi, Dana. That's a good one. Let's just take this with us. Yeah. Let's put it on our head, eh? Yeah. Do I look funny? Nice and warm. Nice and warm for you. Bye bye. This is, this is very severe. You can see the shortening of the skull from front to back. You can see that the back of the head is quite flat. The forehead is very flat. And it's hard to see, but the eyes are very, very shallow. And the cranial base, I mean, the cranial base here is, is almost vertical. Are we ready to go? Everybody happy? Antibiotics on board? Blood in the room? Perfect. I think on your side, Justin, we're going to have to dissect all the way down and get this free because otherwise as we lift this flap up, if it's still tethered here, it's going to be a problem. So, yeah, we need to get full mobility of that. Okay, let the great Dr. Drake enter into the operating field. No, no. So the thing we really worry about are the major venous channels, which are running like this and across the bottom here. And we absolutely have to leave them undisturbed. So is there any way you can tell where they are from the outside surface of the skull, Jim? Well, we know that they follow the sutures here. Right. It's a little bit unpredictable, but it's, yeah, somewhere in the general area. Yeah. OK. Dr. Drake has 
doing a superb job of removing the bone, which is going to allow us to do the reshaping of the skull at the back. And then after we've got the bone off, what we'll do is we'll reconstruct the back of the skull and then get ready to turn the patient a little bit later on in the procedure. But we've encountered some bleeding. We just lost a bit. No large piece of gel foam. cc's of blood. It's not bad, actually. Okay. All right. Well, we, we're, we now have the bleeding totally under control. All right. So the difficult part of this operation is now done. Like the grunt work is done. Now the are scary part. part. Yeah, right. Great. Thanks, guys. Whew. Malleable, please. Medium size. That's good. Large prey off still. So um, what, we've, what we've done is we've taken off the anterior portion of the skull which was in this position. And we've decided that the curve here would be very suitable to reconstruct the back portion of the skull. And what we're doing now is we're going to fix this in position. And the aim is to make a prominence at the back that looks more normal, and then decrease the vertical height of the skull and narrow the sides. As we do this, you can see that the brain expands towards the back and accommodates what the new shape is going to be. So this brain is very versatile. and we're hoping that it will allow us to shape the skull lower, narrower, and, and longer. Four screws, so one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. Thank you, ma'am. Now that we've uh, reconstructed the skull, we're just doing some minor finishing touches to the soft tissues. Now we're going to be closing the skin. So we're pretty much done, the, the major component of the operation. And, uh, and then Dr. DeRuder will reverse the anesthetic and hopefully awake this patient uneventfully. Wire cutter, please. Um, what do you put? Maybe you might need some towel clips or a couple of stay stitches on here. It looks like it is going to reach here. Okay. Yeah. Great, thanks guys. It's been a long day for you, huh? Yes, it's finally over. Just finished, he's, uh, he's awake and crying, which is a good sign. Moving all four limbs, which is also a good sign. Um, everything went very, very well during the surgery. The, um, when we did the back of the head, there were two very small veins that we encountered that ended up bleeding a fair bit. The nature of this operation is such that we can run into quite a significant amount of blood loss. So he lost a fair bit of blood. He got the two units that you donated, but he also got an additional four units. Oh my God. So uh, I have, otherwise, I was very pleased with the way things went. We were very careful around the shunt, and there was a piece of bone that we left the shunt attached to that we've attached to everything else. And I think he looks great. I was really pleased with the improvement of the head shape. We've got a nice round head at the back. Nice. I think we've got a good, prominent forehead. And when you see him, you might think that's maybe a little too prominent, but I've done that somewhat on purpose because as he grows, he'll grow into it. All right. Thanks. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Half an hour. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs>
That's normal to be in the hood. Okay. Long anesthetic. She needs a little extra humidity. He's doing okay though? Yeah. I just can't believe the difference. That's great. Wow. So he's going to be here till 9. I'll take him over to ICU. Okay. So you can see and see him over to the ICU? Oh, I'm here 24 7. Daniel, how you doing? Having a good breakfast? So, um, we talked about this as part of the whole uh, scenario, but um, Daniel had a temperature last night, and we need to investigate that temperature. And uh, as you know, we should get a chest X-ray because he sounds like his breathing's a little bit on the noisy side, and we worry when we do an operation that it's fairly long uh, that they can end up with some problems with their breathing. So he's going to go for chest x-ray this morning. And he'll also have some routine blood work. I checked his blood work from last night. His white count is elevated, and that can be just as a reaction from the surgery. But it also can be related to infection, so I think we need to get on that. we can't find a source for the temperature and the thing that we would worry about is an infection and there appears to be nothing to suggest that there is an infection going on and we do see temperatures when we do this type of surgery quite frequently um, how's he doing from your point of view um, I think he's good he's still got he's still pretty chesty but that's that's really it he's back to eating and everything else so and don't be afraid of Getting the incision line wet? Oh, we washed his, I bathed him yesterday. Great. So, didn't like it too much, but yeah. Okay. And as I said, um, call me if there's a concern. Oh, yeah. Okay, Daniel, yeah. you get to go home today. Say yay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Say hooray. Say hooray. Thanks. You guys are free. Okay. You do remember me, don't you? Yeah. Hello. You going to come say hello? You are so sweet. When we look critically at it, we see that Daniel's head now is shaped uh, uh, a lot, uh, a lot rounder at the back, mm -hmm. and the forehead looks less prominent in the areas that it, it shouldn't be prominent, and more prominent in the areas above the eyes where it should be. And this will hopefully be the last operation that Daniel requires on the top of his head. Um, when we looked at the CT scans, you can see a very nice change. Okay. That was now, I guess, about two months ago. Unfortunately, with aprids, with the presence of a shunt, but also the natural history of aprids syndrome, is that a lot of children do end up having to have repeat surgery because of this tendency for the bone to relapse or to return to where it came from. At some point in time, he will likely require an operation to move the upper jaw forward. Mm -hmm. And we would often do that around five to seven years of age. 
So our plan then is to keep a very close eye on you and Daniel, and we will see you back on a yearly basis. We will schedule a CAT scan for a year from now, from the time of his surgery, just to check on things. And uh, we'll continue to follow him with regards to his development and his facial structure, his teeth, his breathing, everything, all aspects of it. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Now that Daniel's hydrocephalus is being controlled and his skull has been reconstructed, Daniel's brain can develop normally and he is no longer in imminent danger of brain damage. Say goodbye. Thanks a lot. Nice to see you again. Thanks. See you in January. Okay. You want to go for a walk? <laughs> Although Daniel will face additional surgery in the future, the first phase of his struggle with Apert syndrome has been a success. On the next episode of Life's Little Miracles, Todd's splenectomy and Taylor's nerve injury.